Hello and welcome to another out of spec detailing video. We're in my shop, Clear Detailing, and today we are working on a BMW 320AI. Now, the reason for this video, I wasn't actually planning on making a video on this particular vehicle, but I came across something that I wanted to talk about, and that is kind of the used cars and something that I've really been seeing lately. Um, as you guys know, the car market is kind of crazy. Wait lists to get new vehicles can be months, up to a year, maybe longer. So a lot of people are buying used cars. Now, there's a few things that go on with that, and I, I think this market's kind of changing a few things. Um, I've been in the detailing industry for eight plus years now, and I'm really starting to see a lot of issues with used cars. Now, this is not all used cars, it's just in certain cases. Um, but I wanted to bring this topic up and maybe start a discussion and maybe even if you're in the market for a used car, things to look out for um, when buying one. Now, this car is in for a full paint correction, ceramic coating, doing all of that. It's not a you know, extreme luxury vehicle. It's a daily driver for this client. Um, this is actually a new client of mine, first time working with them. So have to kind of um, have different conversations. Now, this case, um, this car came in, it's got super low mileage, which was kind of interesting. It's a 2018, has 8,600 miles on it, but this car was actually bought at an auction. And the interesting thing with an auction is you don't have the opportunity to look at the car before you purchase it typically. Um, I believe this one was bought online. Logistics don't matter. It's the same kind of premise um, as we go. Now, something interesting. So as I was working around the car doing the paint correction, I started noticing this rear bumper looked a little off. And I mean off as a lot of kind of, um, for one, different coloration, terrible texture, and lots of um, debris under there, so paint nibs. And what I've been seeing a lot is that cars that come in used, because prices are so inflated and everything, people are trying to make these things look good quickly and not always the best. The paint job on this rear bumper is pretty terrible, to be quite frank with you guys. Um, one of the interesting things that I want to talk about is kind of the detailer's dilemma is, okay, so we've got a painted bumper here that doesn't look very good. We're gonna try and make it look as good as possible, um, but we also have to maybe not go for perfection, make it look as good as possible, because we can get into some other issues as we go. So I wanna talk about that. I'm gonna pull you guys in right now and show you some of the things I've been seeing um, a lot on used cars, and it's, it's one of those unfortunate things. If you're not thoroughly inspecting these vehicles, um, people are getting away with a lot. They're trying to get maximum dollar for their car. So maybe this car had been, you know, had some scrapes here. It got quickly painted um, before they sold it to a company like Carvana, um, CarMax, anything like that, just to make it look good quickly. Um, being that this is an auction car, you never know the full history of it. Has it been through a wreck? Has it been through hail? Has it, so all of those things are maybe something to think about. I would really recommend either you guys, when you're purchasing a used car, make sure you're looking at it. Make sure you're looking at all the panels. Um, a service that I offer for a lot of my clients, because I have a lot of clients that buy a ton of used cars, right? So they come to trade cars in and out. Um, I will actually go and look at a vehicle, do like a pre-purchase inspection from a detailing aspect, maybe measuring the paint. Has this been repainted? Ooh, that looks a little funny. I actually had a client with one car he ended up purchasing and the car fact showed it had um, no accidents, but the whole side of the car had been repainted very, very poorly. I think that may be kind of a similar situation here. So we're gonna jump into this. I just wanna show you guys some stuff, talk about the detailer's dilemma in this particular case, and maybe just kind of um, some ideas as we go down the road in the new car crazy market that we're in. I've got like this side paint corrected and then I was, as I was working this way is when I really, I, I went stop. Okay, I need to make a video about this and talk about it a little bit. 
So again, my kind of premise on this vehicle in particular, what we're just gonna do um, is make it look as good as possible. We're gonna do a couple compounding passes and do it at a low speed, make sure we're not heating the paint up too much. I am like super, super concerned about all of the edges here. I mean, again, look at this paint drip, how bad that is. It is severely, severely bad, like a huge glob. And down here, we just have like the strangest texture. Up here is literally to the point that it's matte. If I were to try and wet sand this, like I could literally maybe hit that a couple times. And if that goes through, I'm paying for a repainted bumper. So this is, again, that's one of those detailers dilemmas where I have to go, okay, stop. What's the goal of this particular car? The goal on this car is to protect it, right? So it's a daily driver. It's gonna be in the winter time. Um, gonna be driven in the winter time. It's gonna have crud all over it. He wants a vehicle that's easy to maintain and that's exactly what we're gonna do. I, again, I would love to get this rear bumper as looking as good as possible, but there are so many paint nibs in this. Like look at the debris. I hope it'll pick up on camera here. Look at all the kind of just small particles in the paint. That's not something I'm gonna be able to get out if I were to, um, well, I could, I guess, if I were to wet sand it, but in this buffing case, I'm not going to be able to, which is totally fine. This area up here is likely not gonna improve. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to do kind of the paint correction on this. I'll buff this a little bit. Hopefully it'll take some of that texture out. But again, I'm just not comfortable wet sanding on this. I, yeah, this is one of those weird situations that you never really know what you're getting into on a detail until you're totally in it. Like I said, guys, this is something I've been seeing a lot on these used cars. Um, it, again, the market is so, so crazy on these vehicles that you're not able to get a car for a few months. So you go to a dealership and they have, you know, this is kind of a cool color on a um, 320. I originally said 328i, but it's a 320X drive BMW, a nice daily driver, um, will be perfect for the Colorado winters. And then kind of a unique color. You know, you normally see these in white, silver, black. This sunset orange really pops out in the sun. And um, when you have it repainted like this, it's, look at the difference in color there. So much lighter on the bumper. That's what really kind of caught my eye as I was working around this. And honestly, when you're standing up top, you don't see a ton of all of these kind of issues down here. I'm gonna make it look as good as possible, but you really don't see it as poorly. Um, yeah, again, on these, the used car market is so strange right now. And it really have, I haven't seen as much weird stuff as I have in the last couple of months. It's just been kind of car after car. They all come in with kind of funky issues. I've seen a lot of um, trim repaired poorly, um, cars that maybe been in accidents and quickly taken to a body shop and repainted like I would assume this one has been. Um, yeah, it's just one of those things. So what I would tell you guys, if you are in the market for a used car, either one of two things, go inspect it, go look for things like this. Is, is this something you're willing to um, deal with on a daily driver? Maybe, and that's totally fine. And if you are, make sure that's reflected in the price of the vehicle. Point these things out to the dealer. If you are buying a car off an auction website and don't see photos of this and the car shows up, you're kind of out of luck. So do your due diligence. Um, if possible, maybe have a detailer go look at the car, take paint measurements. Now, again, in a situation like this, I can't measure the paint. It literally does nothing. Um, the rest of the car looks pretty decent. There's a few dings here and there, nothing too severe um, that would be like, I just don't want this car at all. My personal case, this would be pretty frustrating to me, but I would have gone and looked at the car and made sure it was exactly what I was wanting or you know, it would be reflected in the price in which this case it was not. So what I'm gonna do now, guys, I'm gonna jump in here. I'm gonna do a quick paint correction on these areas. I'll pull you in afterwards, seeing if we got any of that texture out, if it looks slightly better. I'm hoping for that, but I, it's gonna be one of those cases. I'm gonna do a couple passes on this and say, stop. 
I really, really, really want to just save this. I don't want to deal with repainting it. That's just not a good situation for me or for the client or for the car. So let's jump right into that right now. So you guys just watched this section being kind of cut right there. Reasonably happy. Notice that a lot of the kind of dull areas now look quite a bit better. There is absolutely still texture in here, guys. And I will, you know, be the first one to tell you and show you that. And I think I'm okay with that. This honestly looks a lot better than I anticipated. Um, normally on something like this, I would kind of anticipate that the buffing would have done little to nothing, but we got a little bit of clarity and a little bit of the texture out. Now, I know there's gonna be people in the comments that go, just wet sand it, it's gonna be fine. I've been in this situation too many times to <laughs> kind of know that these don't always turn out the greatest and I've had to repaint panels. That's what happens. It's a risk that you take on every car. That's why I measure paint, um, making sure we have the conversations with the customer. What are your expectations? How are you using this vehicle? Is this a car that you're using on a daily basis? It's going to get scratched up. Um, that type of deal. Like again, if we were to go and wet sand these, these cars nowadays have a lot of texture in them and so do you know bumpers like this that get repainted the problem with that is is most modern cars don't normally and this is a general statement don't normally have enough paint on them to wet sand all the texture out cut and polish it and have enough for future use right so say we wet sanded this entire panel here to get all of that texture out and we get scratches here and we try and go buff that we don't have enough paint to buff that so that's typically why we're in the preservation and making things look as good as possible um, instead of going full out. Now, what concerned me with this car, again, I was talking about like the paint drip down here. If a, if a body shop is willing to put out work like that and not repaint it, um, I have no idea how much paint's on this. Again, if this was maybe on a hood or a door where I could read how many mills were left on the paint, um, I, I may be more apt to attack this, but because it's on a rear bumper, I'm very much working in the dark. My gauges don't work on it. Uh, people claim that there are gauges that work on these. I've never found them to be super accurate. So you're always really taking chances working on situations um, like this. Now, this is always, again, the detailer's dilemma. You're gonna hear me talk a lot about that on this channel is knowing when to stop. I'm stopping here. I'm not buffing this anymore. I'm not gonna wet sand this. I've run into too many times where you can get into sketchy situations by trying to get everything perfect. And likely what's gonna happen is a client's gonna go, I didn't even notice that and it looks fine. So he's happy with it. I'm gonna be happy with it. If he wants to press the issue and say, this looks terrible, the only option here I would say is really and honestly, this bumper needs to be repainted and I'm not gonna be the one paying for that. I am not going to push the limits of this and just go for it, trying to get every last bit of texture out. That's not the job on this detail. And um, make sure you're having, if you're a detailer and watching this channel, make sure you are having those conversations um, with your clients about stuff like this and where they're looking to go. If they just want a kind of quick, uh, get swirl marks and scratches out, love marks, and they want their car ceramic coated, do that. You're not trying to make this a concours level vehicle. This is a daily driver. Um, now, if you're getting into cars that have been painted for show car uses, concours, they're gonna have a ton of paint and you're gonna be able to take stuff like that, but realistically, you're not gonna get paint like that on a concours level car in the first place. So have those conversations. And if you're a um, customer, Understand that stuff like this happens. And as a detailer, I'm trying to make this look as best as possible. And I, I would say the results look okay here. 
I mean, trying to salvage, you know, making diamond out of the rough on this is uh, kind of an understatement. So I'm gonna work on this lower section here. Well, you can really see all the texture down here as well. Just kind of a nasty, nasty coloring down here, but I'm sure we're gonna make this look a lot better. All right, in all reality, I'm reasonably thrilled with this for the situation that we're kind of placed in in this. Um, we got a lot of the texture out down here. Now you'll notice there's still a ton of solvent pop, but we got really that dullness out, which is exactly what I was looking to do. Um, we got most of the scratches out. Uh, there, this had been kind of rotary buffed as well, so the shop must have seen that this was there and tried to make it look a little bit better, but it didn't. So you'll notice over here, I haven't done this section yet, but notice in that reflection how cloudy that is versus even over here. So we made a little bit of improvement. And I also left this over here. So again, it gets pretty darn cloudy um, as we move on the bumper there. So again, this is one of those times I'm stopping here. I'm reasonably happy with this. I'll have a conversation with the client um, when they pick this car up about what I went through on this. Um, they're, you know, I could call them, have them come to the shop, but it's kind of one of those situations that I'm just gonna do it in this case, notice again down here, look how dull some of those areas are. I, I would love to make this perfect, but I think salvaging this, even with the amount of debris in this, the solvent pop here is pretty severe. I've never really seen it that terrible. I've seen it quite a bit, but um, not that bad. There's just so much debris in this paint that I, I really don't think this is super salvageable. So in this case, in my opinion, we're doing the best case scenario for the car for the customer, for my business. Um, again, it, so it, let's say a situation here. I, I make a decision, I'm gonna get all this out and I go to wet sand this. I sand through the paint or I sand it and then I start buffing it and I blow through an edge and I now have to call the customer and go, so I was trying to you know, get this really severe stuff out of the rear bumper. I blew through the paint. That is not a fun discussion. I have had that, those situations happen. I've actually had it on brand new cars too, believe it or not. Um, I, I had a Audi A7 back in the day. I was working on an A-pillar and I was trying to get this deep scratch out and some bag rub. We can talk about that later on too. Um, but I went to buff it and blew right through the paint. And you know, the, the best thing in that situation for me to do is just say, hey, I messed up and use it as a learning experience. And that's where we're years down the road later, fixing this stuff the proper way instead of just going all the way for it. All right, so hope you guys kind of enjoyed this little chat discussion, a little show and tell on this particular car. Um, you know, in, in this situation, like I said, been seeing this a lot lately. Um, the, the market's so weird for cars right now, right? And it's, it's starting to adjust maybe slightly, um, but people are waiting, you know, six months, a year, um, you know, just months and time and time and time for new vehicles. So there's a lot of used cars out there. And I, I think what's been happening is because of that, dealers are needing inventory, right? Or people are sending their kind of projects and trying to get the most money out of it through Carvana or CarMax. And this kind of stuff is coming through and you're seeing this stuff down the road. And it's kind of a bad side effect of this whole industry, right? So say this car was sitting on a dealer lot, maybe it got scraped. Um, they quickly go get it repainted, throw the bumper back on and go, good enough, right? You know, nobody's gonna notice. Well. If you get that customer or the detailer that's gonna notice these things, it's important to understand that we're not trying to make this perfect. Um, I, I've, like I said, I've been in this situation before. I've been detailing for eight plus years now and I burned through paint. I mean, it, it happens. Every time you put a buffer on a car, anytime you're doing work like this, you're risking that. So it's important to understand the nuances that come with this type of work. Um, you know, like I've, I've made mistakes. I had a brand new Audi A7 um, from our local dealership here when I was working on it and there was um, some bag rub from the, the transport on it. I was trying to get it all out and I went through the paint and it was a brand new car. You know, stuff like that happens. And uh, it's being able to understand 
where to stop and where to keep going is always that detailer's dilemma. And we're always like balancing that line and going, do I go more? Do I stop? Do I go more? Do I stop? I, I think what I've found through experience is most of the times it's better to stop. This particular car, I guarantee this client never saw this. Um, you know, we quickly walked around the car. He pointed some things out, never talked about the rear bumper. So areas like the, the paint drip back here, I'm sure he never even noticed that. I'm going to point it out to him. It likely will frustrate him and he's going to go, Ugh. but down the road, um, you know, if he goes, well, was this on there before and that type of deal? And I haven't said anything that looks bad on me. Right. So I don't, I don't want to do that. I had a, a client not pretty recently actually that just bought a new Mercedes, super excited about it. Um, it was not from a Mercedes dealer and he brought the car here and we were looking around it and I go, Oh, interesting. The front bumper has been repainted. He goes, what do you mean? It's this car is a clean Carfax. It looks perfect. And you know, I showed him, I go, well, listen, the front bumper compared to the hood has zero rock chips, no pitting, no gouging, nothing like that. That nothing on it. All of the grills, when you started getting down low to it, it looked fine kind of standing up at eye level, right? But when you got down at the car, maybe at like this angle, all the grills, like none of the clips were pushed in. There were broken clips. It looked like it was a new bumper, quickly repainted. There was overspray all over stuff. So, you know, we had those conversations and he was a little frustrated with it, but unfortunately that's one of those cases where he didn't do his due diligence in looking at it. And, um, I think if he would have seen that in the first place, he could have either gotten a better deal on the car or maybe he didn't want to deal with that because it had a new bumper fascia on it and he would have gone, Hmm, there's probably some other things that happened with this. Um, so maybe I'll go look at a different car and, you know, go down that road. So very, very important guys. If you're in the used car market, look at these cars, you know, go drive them, make sure everything feels safe mechanically, right? You're not going to buy a car without never seeing any records or, um, anything like that. Um, said this car had 8,600 miles on it. So you'd think it's pretty factory fresh, but when you start thinking about it down the road, so this car is 8,600 miles, it's a 2018 and it was bought at auction. There's some, there's a backstory, right? And I, I've always had this saying with these cars is every single car has a story. And in this case, something's happened here. I don't know the full story, but I'm trying to make the story better in the future and, and, you know, do the best possible. So thank you guys for joining us for another video. Um, leave a comment below if you've ever seen some stuff like this in the, in the used car, if you've dealt with that personally, um, I'd be kind of interested to hear experiences on that as well. Um, again, like I said, I've been seeing a lot of it and just to point out, this is something that you guys may want to invest in. If you buy a lot of used cars, that's a paint gauge. I got this on Amazon under a hundred bucks showing this to you guys just to understand that even in a professional setting, I can use that. Um, in this particular case, it wasn't applicable, which is totally fine, but, um, just understanding that process. So also, um, let us know what you're interested in seeing on this channel. Any kind of um, thoughts on like the detailing process that you want to see any um, maybe tests and things like that with products that you're interested in. We'll love to hear what you guys have to think down below in the comment section. Um, as always, thanks for joining us here at my shop, clear detailing located in Windsor, Colorado. Um, I hope to see you next time. Thanks for joining us on another out of spec detailing video.